four years between April 2019 when Bashir regime was toppled by peaceful protesters who were primarily women, civil society and youth. And the start of the current war, Sudanese women and civil society have invested in massive effort and tried heavily to influence the outcome of the transition in anticipation for peace and democracy. Women, I think, have always been, as you mentioned, uh, victims in war. And I think it's not just uh, a question of incidental or level damage. These attacks are conscientious and they are political. This extreme violence against civilians currently happening in Sudan is not happening in a vacuum. It's the outcome of over 20 years of violence and atrocities against the people in Darfur, the people in South Kordofan, and also the direct outcome of impunity and the neglect of the importance of accountability by the international actors. These are the roots of the current violence we are confronted with today on the streets of Khartoum and just as bloodily in Darfur and Kordofan as the army and the RSF bottle, out, bottle it out for surprise. Women grapple with two types of violence. There is the state-sponsored violence and so we're talking about sexual and gender-based violence, but also violence that is baked into the laws and policies of the state. And the second is social norms, which are also, um, they, they delimit women's lives, but they are, again, sanctioned by the state as well through these different laws. They also uh, kidnap. Uh, the kidnapping, it happened to everybody. And there's no, like, the, the purpose of the kidnapping is the se it's sexual enslavement, and, and, and actually, you see, it's, it's kind of, the, the purpose is just uh, uh, make people evacuating their houses. It's one of the purposes. And, and by dragging them off the, like, the other thing, I call it, sexual and like, violence towards where girls and their Any any, pro any process that is designed based on discrimination will ultimately lead to discriminatory outcomes. And the whole, um, normalizing of 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 um, of sexual and gender based violence needs to stop. We need to denormalize that. Um, it, it it it's not it's not human and it's not right. It has to be seen. Um, it has to be seen as such. So you have to keep the women's story, the perfect, the you know the crimes against women at the center of the stage all the time even if people tell you you're talking too much keep talking everything they say say i have a story we have a story this is our number one issue As the conference concludes, we demand local authorities, national governments, regional and international organizations to one, a gender responsive protection framework that ensure unhindered access to survivors and community led humanitarian aid for citizens impacted by the war and ensure that the voices of those on the front line are not silenced by violence and intimidation. Two, a cessation of hostilities is monitored closely with actionable consequences if violated. While facilitating a broad-based and inclusive civilian-led conflict transformation process, in which women play a leading role. Three, sustainable feminist and, fun and flexible funding 
for civil society and women rights organizations working in conflict zone, including internally displaced and refugee camps. Four, enhance support for adequate humanitarian aid for the civilian affected by the conflict by providing resources and program to programs to support their economic stability and social well-being along with mental health and psychosocial support services. Five, sexual and gender-based violence must never be sidelined as a mere peripheral issue. It's a central to any political process, including accountability, reparation, and transitional justice. Six, the armed actor be accountable for their responsibility for the mass violation instead of granting impunity and perpetuating the cycle of conflict as a trade-off for short-term stability. Seven, the African Union engaged in immediate and decisive action, including diplomatic interventions aimed at facilitating the cessation of hostilities and establishing a fact-finding mission. Eight, the inclusion and meaningful leading participation of women and women-led organization in peace processes and negotiation. Nine, the swift implementation and the resolution of the fact-finding mission by the UN Human Rights Council. This mission must be gender responsive and consult with women-led organizations that have been central to providing support and documenting violations on the ground. 10, the establishment of tribunal to address the war crimes committed during the conflict, focusing on crime against women and girls to ensure sustainable justice and accountability. Lastly, international actions to stop illicit financial streams and political economies that enrich key perpetuators and of violence. In solidarity with the women of Sudan, SIHA and the women attending this conference commit to continuing our activism and advocacy for the right and well-being and well-being of Sudanese women.